In this video, we're going to talk about how to identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent in a chemical reaction. What you need to know is that the substance that is oxidized is the reducing agent, and the substance that is reduced is the oxidizing agent. So if we could find out which substance is oxidized and which one is reduced, we can easily find out which one is the reducing agent and which one is the oxidizing agent. Now there's two simple ways in which you could determine which substance is oxidized. The substance that is oxidized loses electrons and its oxidation state goes up. The substance that is reduced gain electrons and the oxidation state goes down. So now let's put this into practice. Let's say we have zinc metal reacting with chlorine gas to produce zinc chloride. Which substance is oxidized and which substance is reduced? To find this, we just need to focus on the left side. The substance that is oxidized and the substance that is reduced will be on the left side or on the reactant side. You don't have to look at the product side. Now, what we need to do is determine the oxidation state of every element in this chemical reaction. The oxidation state of a pure element is always zero. Now, in a compound, it could change. In zinc chloride, zinc has a two plus charge and chlorine has a minus one charge. It's good to know your common ions. If needed, I recommend uh, printing out the polyatomic ion sheet in Google or in Google images. So the oxidation state of zinc is the charge of the ion, which in this case is going to be plus two. And for chlorine, the oxidation state is minus one. So notice that for zinc, the oxidation state went up. It went from zero to two. So that's an increase in the oxidation state. For chlorine, it went down. It went from zero to negative one. So the oxidation state was reduced. The substance that is oxidized is the one in which the oxidation state goes up. So we could say that zinc in this reaction was oxidized, chlorine was reduced. So therefore, because zinc was oxidized, it is the reducing agent. And because chlorine was reduced, it is the oxidizing agent. So that's a quick and simple way of how you could find the reducing agent and the oxidizing agent in a chemical reaction. Now, for the sake of practice, let's work on some more examples. So let's say we have iron metal reacting with hydrochloric acid, and it produces iron 2 chloride and hydrogen gas. So feel free to pause the video and determine which substance is the oxidizing agent and which one is the reducing agent. So the first thing I would recommend doing is identifying the pure elements. Iron is in its pure elemental stage, and the same is true for hydrogen. So the oxidation state of these elements in their natural elemental state will be zero. Now, let's determine the oxidation states of hydrogen and chlorine and HCl. In a compound, hydrogen typically has a plus one charge. And we know chlorine, as an ion, usually has a minus one charge. So the oxidation state of H will be plus one, and for chlorine, minus one. Now in FeCl2, chlorine will also has, it will also have a negative one charge, which means Fe is gonna have a plus two charge, I mean a two plus charge or a plus two oxidation state. So for Fe, the oxidation state goes from zero to two. So the oxidation state goes up. For chlorine, it doesn't change, but for hydrogen, it goes from one to zero. As you can see here, it went from plus one to zero. So hydrogen was reduced. So thus we could say that iron metal is the reducing agent in this reaction, and we could say that hydrochloric acid is the oxidizing agent, even though it was the hydrogen part of HCl that was reduced. So now let's move on to our next example. Let's say that we have sodium iodide 
reacting with bromine, which produces sodium bromide, and I2. Go ahead and work on this example. So it helps to know the charges of the metal cations. Alkali metals like sodium will almost always have a plus one charge in an ionic compound. I've never seen a case where it has something else. But there might be exceptions. But for the most part, in a typical chemistry course, if you see sodium in an ionic compound, it will usually have a plus one charge. And the halogens like chloride, bromide, iodide, they typically have a minus one charge. Bromine, as a pure element, will have a zero oxidation state, and the same is true for I2. So with this information, we can now find the answer that we're looking for. So the oxidation state of iodide, it changes from negative one to zero. So going from negative one to zero, that's an increase. The oxidation state went up, which means that for sodium iodide, it is the reducing agent because it was oxidized. In the case of bromine, the oxidation state went from zero to negative one, highlighting these numbers. So that's a decrease. Because the oxidation state went down, bromine was reduced, which means it's the oxidizing agent. So remember, the substance that is oxidized is the reducing agent, and the substance that is reduced is the oxidizing agent. Now let's work on another example. Hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas to produce liquid water. Go ahead and determine the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent of this reaction. So hydrogen has an oxidation state of zero. But in water, hydrogen has a plus one oxidation state and oxygen has a negative two oxidation state. So the charges must neutralize each other. So this is gonna be minus two and in its pure elemental state in O2, oxygen is gonna be zero, but it's plus one in water. So the oxidation state of hydrogen goes from zero to one. So because the oxidation state goes up, we could say that hydrogen is oxidized in this reaction, which makes it the reducing agent. In the case of oxygen, it goes from zero to negative two. So the oxidation state goes down, thus oxygen is said to be reduced, which makes it the oxidizing agent because it causes the other substance to be oxidized. So that's it for this example. But now let's try a harder example. So we have the chloride ion reacting with the perchlorate ion to produce two chlorine ions. Go ahead and find the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. Now just to review some rules, anytime you have a pure element in its natural state, the oxidation state is always zero. The oxidation state of fluorine is always minus one, except when it's in its pure natural elemental state, which it will be zero. So I'm gonna put F2 here. The oxidation state of oxygen is always negative two, except when it's bonded to fluorine or in its pure elemental state. Now there are some like peroxides and superoxides where oxygen is in the fractional oxidation state or even in the minus one oxidation state. So there are some exceptions, but these are the general rules. When hydrogen is bonded to a nonmetal, typically the oxidation state will be plus one. When it's bonded to a metal, in the form of hydride, it's minus one. So what you need to know is that for each of these polyatomic ions, the oxidation state of oxygen is negative two. So only the oxidation state of chlorine is the one that's changing. So we need to determine the oxidation state of chlorine for each of these polyatomic ions. Let's start with the chloride ion. Let's write an equation, chlorine, plus the two oxygen atoms, the total oxidation state of these three particles in this polyatomic ion will have a negative one oxidation state because the overall charge is minus one. Now we're looking for the oxidation state of chlorine, so we're gonna call it X. The oxidation state of oxygen is minus two. 
So we need to solve for x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Add in 4 to both sides, we get that x is positive 3. So that's going to be the oxidation state of chlorine in the chloride ion. Now let's move on to the chloride ion. So we're going to write Cl plus 3O is going to be equal to the net charge, negative 1. So this is going to be 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. And then add in 6 to both sides, we get plus 5. So in chlorate, ClO3, the oxidation state is plus 5. Now let's do the same thing for the last one. So it's going to be x plus 4 times negative 2 is equal to negative 1. 4 times 2 is negative 8. And then we're going to add 8 to both sides. So the oxidation state of chlorine in perchlorate is plus 7. So focusing on chlorite, the oxidation state goes from 3 to 5. As chlorite becomes one chlorate ion, we see that the oxidation state goes from 3 to 5. So thus the oxidation state goes up. Chlorite is said to be oxidized, which makes it the reducing agent. Now focus on perchlorate, it goes from 7 to plus 5. So the oxidation number went down. Thus we could say that perchlorate was reduced to chlorate. And so that makes it the oxidizing agent. So make sure you understand that. Chlorite is oxidized to chlorate. And in this reaction, perchlorate is reduced to chlorate. So chlorate is like the middle ground between chlorite and perchlorate. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent in a chemical reaction.